Wayne's love life was in the crapper. Hell, he didn't even have a love life. Unless nights alone with his hand and a porno counted. It was the only intimate relationship he had ever had. Friends tried to set him up on blind dates, but the ladies either never showed, took an emergency phone call and bolted, or hung around long enough just for a free meal. He hadn't fared any better with dating services and websites. Women were complex, confusing creatures who both captivated and terrified him. From beautiful actresses to drabby housewives. True beauty was on the inside, and it was those insides he had trouble getting to. He wanted to get to know a woman, but he was tongue-tied and awkward. Something always seemed to go wrong. His friends got him many first dates, but never a second. He was lucky if he could get through the first. Women only seemed interested in him at first because of his good-paying job as an engineer. But when they laid eyes on him in the flesh or talked to him online, they all seemed to deflate and swiftly lose interest. Eventually, he'd come to believe it was a combination of his looks and personality that was off-putting. He tried different approaches with women, and none of the tactics seemed to work even genuine honesty. All he wanted was a partner in life, someone to share his innermost secrets with, someone to marry and maybe raise a family with, someone who could even accept him despite his deepest, darkest secret, his love of wearing and using diapers. Maybe he was meant to be alone, to be a diaper-wearing bachelor for life. That line of thinking depressed him enough to cause him to drink himself senseless, which was how he found out about the speed date event being held at the local bar. Wayne wasn't ready just yet to resign himself to eternal bachelorhood. Maybe he wasn't casting a wide enough net. There were plenty of fish in the sea. He just had to find his special fishy which led him up to tonight. Mm, are you sure I look all right? Not overdressed? Wayne checked himself in the mirror on the bedroom wall. He wasn't cut and hunky like his friend. He was pudgy and pale. He wore a wine-colored dress shirt, black tie, black leather belt, and charcoal gray slacks with shiny black dress shoes. He sucked in his gut and frowned at himself. Mm, maybe it's too soon. I should wait. I'll lose some more weight first. It hasn't been very long since my date with Darla. Maybe she'll... Bernard sat on Wayne's bed and shook his head. Buddy, it's been a month. That gal's long gone. She never returned your calls. Besides, you look great. You've lost 30 pounds now, right? Tonight's your night. I feel it in my bones. You said that a decade ago at our prom. Remember how that night turned out? Bernard cringed at the mere memory of it. Uh, don't dwell on the past so much. Buck up your courage, man. Tonight's going to be different, Bernard encouraged. Yeah, but... No buts. Bernard stood up and grabbed his childhood friend's leather coat. You're going. Don't flake out. You got this. Be calm. Smile. Talk about your Corvette. Show the chicks a picture of it. Tell them you're thinking about getting a Harley. Tell them about your raise at work. Uh, I don't know. Wayne reluctantly put on his coat. Isn't that kind of materialistic? Like I'm bragging or something? Wayne, 
Bernard grasped Wayne's sloping, beefy shoulders. You're a great guy, but sex is a battle. Love is war. Some lucky guys are born pussy magnets. The rest of us schmucks play whatever angles we can. So buck up, get out there, and go get them, tiger. He gave Wayne an encouraging shake. Wayne zipped his coat up. Mm, you're right. I gotta at least try. He grabbed his wallet and Corvette keys. He nearly made it through his house to the front door, then stopped so abruptly Bernard almost ran into him. Oh, my leftover clam chowder. It'll go bad if it's not eaten up. Here, let me pack it up for you and Molly. With a new baby and all, I'm sure she doesn't have time to cook. Bernard body blocked Wayne's dash to the kitchen. I'll get it. Don't worry about it. You just focus on getting yourself a pair of big old titties tonight. Bernard grabbed the plastic soup container from the fridge. Thanks. He waved the container and walked forward, herding Wayne out the door. Wayne stumbled out onto the porch as his friend shut the door behind him. Wayne felt trapped. Bernard read his face. I'll follow behind you, he offered. Wayne shook his head. Mm, I'm good. I got this. Yes, you do. Burns' voice was firm, and he clapped Wayne's shoulder in passing as he and the homemade clam chowder headed for his minivan as Wayne headed for his Corvette. One woman left. He had met many women, and none were interested in him. Wayne sighed. Just one more. Then he could go home and drown his failure in diaper time and an Oreo crumb cake, with a dollop of whipped cream on top. The whistle blew, and the ladies stood up. The organizer of the speed date had decided to switch things up a bit and have the women instead of the men rotate seats. Chairs scraped on linoleum, and heels clicked as the females moved down one table. The toe of a glittery blue stiletto tapped against his meaty calf. Wayne looked down at the pair of sky-high come-fuck-me shoes, then up at smirking, full, and sensuous peachy pink lips. His mouth went dry. She was easily the most beautiful woman he had ever seen, on the silver screen or off. There was an eerie quality to her beauty, like she was too good to be true. Almost otherworldly. Um, what's a lady like you doing here? He wanted to slap himself as soon as the words were out of his mouth. She laughed and recrossed her long, shapely legs. <laughs> That's one of the oldest pickup lines. But I can tell by your tone and face, it's at least genuine. I I'm sorry, that was rude of me. She waved off his apology, mirth dancing in her eyes and on her lips. Wayne grabbed his gin and tonic and gulped noisily. Satomi. Her cool, velvet voice cut through his nervousness like a finely honed edge of a samurai sword. He thunked the glass down, ice cubes tinkling and rattling inside. Um, uh. He stuttered brain tripping over itself in the haste to think, to process what was going on. Your name is? She prompted and arched one slim, perfectly plucked eyebrow. Uh, Wayne, he managed to mumble out. This was the most progress he had made with a woman all night, and it was her doing all the work. His blood raced, and his mind was numb. He coughed and cleared his throat, giving himself a few precious extra seconds to think. S so, Miss Satomi, um, do you, <clears throat> um, have any uh, hobbies? Hobbits? What? 
Uh, no, what I meant was, um, I mean to say, he shifted on the hard seat. <laughs> I heard you the first time. She laughed, like the tinkling of the ice cubes in his glass. He wasn't quite sure if she was trying to put him at ease or having sport with him, or some weird mix of both. Oh. His face flushed hot and red, like an angry diaper rash. He slurped his drink, turning even redder when he noticed the noises he was making in his flustered state. Satomi leaned back in her seat, raising a glass of the bar's most expensive imported wine to her lips. She took a delicate ladylike sip and studied him with her intense eyes. He felt like she could see right through him. He lowered his eyes and shifted in his seat some more, afraid to ponder how he was measuring up. She set her glass down. A smudge of peachy pink lipstick had come off on the glass, revealing a speck of what should be her natural lip, but it was blue. Wayne blinked. She caught his gaze with her own. He immediately turned his head, glancing at the clock on the wall. When he was brave enough to turn back to her, the blue was gone, more lipstick in its place. Maybe he'd imagined it. Or maybe he was starting to get drunk. Hmm. My nephew loves The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Satomi swirled the wine around in her glass. He watched the dark red liquid sparkle in the bar's low lighting, her voice wrapping around him like a lover's caress. He likes me to read to him after I diaper him for bed, she added, giving him a sly, sideways look. Wayne almost choked, his eyes widening as thoughts of Satomi diapering him danced around through his head, he cleared his throat and tugged on his tie. He wondered how old her nephew was, if he liked books like that, yet still needed diapers at night. Ahem, <clears throat> I, uh, yeah, good books and movies, he burbled out. <clears throat> As for my hobbies, she trailed off casually, pausing a moment and causing him to look up. I like cocks and shiny things. She said cool and casual. Wayne's eyes nearly bugged out of his head. His face flushed redder than before and more blood rushed south. He shifted some more and tugged on his already loose and askew tie, which suddenly felt too tight, as if he couldn't breathe. Satomi just sat there, smirking like a cat with a canary. And yours are? M my my what? Hobbies, she said dryly. Ah, um, yes, I, er, I dabble in cooking, uh, coin collecting, some gardening, and waxing my Corvette. He blurted that last part out when she started to look bored. The little red one that pulled up earlier? I saw it out the front window. Uh, yeah, uh, that one. It's mine. He wasn't sure why a woman like her would deign to talk to him, or what she was doing speed dating. He suspected she was just bored and amusing herself. Or perhaps she was sick of gorgeous shallow men throwing themselves at her stiletto-clad feet. Or maybe she was looking for something different. Or maybe she came just to support a friend. Her grin grew. Mine's the black Aston Martin. I've got a green Jaguar at home, too. Her smirk reached her eyes. A silent, my stilettos are bigger than your dick. She crossed her legs again, leaned back in her seat, and took a bigger drag on her wine. She was careful not to smudge her lipstick. Oh, um, I see. Nice. 
He grabbed at his nearly empty glass. It almost fell out of his sweaty palms. He sat it back down and dabbed at his face with a napkin. She crossed an arm across her waist, just under her pert breasts. They practically spilled from the low-cut silk of her top, and the movement drew his attention. He swallowed thickly. Most perfect woman, indeed. She caught a stare with a knowing, amused glint in her eyes. She was used to being ogled and enjoyed the attention. See something interesting? Um, er, uh, he squirmed. Uh, no. Yes, er, uh, um, lock it. Your locket. It's very, um, nice. She laughed and fingered her silver heart locket on a delicate chain. You're a bad liar, but I'll let it slide. The admiration strokes my ego. Ugh, which doesn't need stroking at all. Her eyebrow shot up in surprise, and he realized with horror he had said that thought out loud. He clamped two pudgy hands over his mouth, feeling rude and ashamed. I'm so sorry. That was so rude of me. He mumbled into his hands. But she waved away his apology with a slim, elegantly manicured hand. It's true. It doesn't. She just smiled, apparently pleased and surprised at his outburst. She lifted the locket nestled just above her magnificent breasts. She popped it open, revealing a small picture of a beautiful Japanese teenager who could have been either male or female. Wayne stared in shock, not expecting that. Uh, your daughter? She's the spitting image of you. No, my nephew. And he is, isn't he? There was an odd, heady note of satisfaction in her tone, as if it greatly pleased her that her nephew looked like her and not his mother. I'm an uncle. Well, in name only. No blood relation. But I am the kid's godfather. Just then, the director blew his whistle, signaling an end to this round of speed dating. Wayne was too intimidated to ask for her number. He was sure she had just been toying with him. Yet, it felt like they had started to connect. Or maybe he was just reading the atmosphere wrong. Uh, that went by quick. Thank you for your time, Miss Satomi. He smiled nervously. His friend Bernard would think he was lying when he told him about this woman. Satomi dipped her head slightly in acknowledgement, as if she were a noble-born lady of yore and it was her due. But she didn't return the compliment. Satomi. Just Satomi. If I wanted you to address me with an honorific, it would be Satomi-sama. Or Satomi-kami. <laughs> Kami-sama would be fine, too. She laughed and stood up. Wayne stared at her, dumbfounded. Um, okay. She snorted and shot him a derisive glance, then turned to look out the window at the front of the bar, gazing past the other singles bundling up in their winter gear. She didn't bother to explain the kami were Japanese gods, and Sama was an honorific showing great respect for a person of higher rank. Satomi-sama would be, in loose translation, equivalent of Mistress Satomi. Satomi-kami would be Goddess Satomi. Kami-sama was a very respectful way of addressing a kami. Wayne thought the night was over, and he had struck out, as he had predicted he would when she suddenly turned back to him, seeming to have come to some conclusion of some sort. The night is young, 
and it started snowing. First snowfall of the season. Come, let's go for some coffee. It was a command, not a request, as if she took it for granted that he would obey. She shrugged on her magnificent fur coat with matching leather fur-trimmed gloves. Wayne blinked like a deer caught in headlights, sure he had misheard her. Uh, b beg pardon? Satomi answered with an impatient gesture of her hand, her heels clicking as she strutted for the door. He scrambled after her, bumping into people as he struggled with his leather coat. In his haste, he almost tripped over his own feet several times. The winter air tore into his lungs like an icy punch. Gah, it's cold. He fumbled with his coat zipper and gloves, then looked around. Hey, Satomi, where'd you go? He was struck with uncertainty, thinking this magnificent creature had played a cruel joke on him. She appeared to have vanished before his eyes melting into the dark night and gently falling snow. Through the big, thick flakes and passing people, the small glow of a lit cigarette caught his eye halfway down the sidewalk. Satomi. Her almond eyes seemed to glow as she took a deep drag and stared at him as he approached. His heart skipped a beat, and he stumbled, hurrying to catch up to her. She exhaled, turned, and started walking. He came up behind her, huffing and puffing. The sweet cinnamon smell of cloves clung to the cold hair about her. The smell was not as bad as menthol cigarettes, but Wayne found smoking a huge turnoff, and he couldn't keep the disgust or disappointment off his face. Cloves? Aren't those banned? Satomi so cast him a sideways look, amusement dancing in her eyes. In America, yes they are. Want one? She extended a slim silver case from her pocket to him. Er, no thanks, I don't smoke. She pocketed the sleek, small black cigarettes and let silence fall between them as he followed her. So, um... How do you get them, then? America isn't the whole world, despite what you Americans think. But these? I pulled them out of a magic hat. <laughs> she laughed once more, and he flushed in embarrassment at her teasing. Smoking's not healthy. Have you ever thought about quitting? He was disgusted enough with the habit that it pushed his embarrassment aside enough for him to voice it. Nope. Ever thought of dieting? She shot right back in a slightly acidic tone. He winced at that. Um, point taken. Sorry. And yes, actually, I have. Lost 30 pounds so far. She snorted delicately and put her nearly smoked cigarette out. Mm, you've still got a ways to go. She paused to scrutinize him, running her penetrating gaze up and down his body, assessing him. He came up very wanting in her appraisal. Wayne stopped short and stared right back at her. She kept walking. Sure, he had put his foot in his mouth several times this evening, but he hadn't meant to, and he had apologized immediately after. Satomi was being deliberately cruel. He waited a few heartbeats as she walked on. Uh, hey, aren't you going to apologize? Now she stopped, and her beautiful face looked bored. No. 
You're free to leave if you want. He wasn't going to just slink away. He hurried after her. That's rude. Yes, it is. She shrugged and smirked at him. His gut twisted. He was certain she was toying with him, like a cat clawing at a mouse. Did she mean to be rude? Or was she just trying to provoke him? He couldn't figure her out, so he was still willing to play her games. And yet, you're still here. It was his turn to shrug and play mysterious, but he was quite sure she could read him like a book and judged him for a fat, desperate fool. The smile she sent him was secretive and pleased, as if she knew or accurately guessed why he still followed. Yeah, that's what I thought. The glint in her roguish eyes mocked him. His bladder gave a dull twinge. He'd have to visit the restroom soon. The liquids he had consumed were starting to catch up with him. He had only indulged in one alcoholic beverage as he had to drive, but he had several glasses of water over the course of the evening. He decided he'd just go when they got to a coffee shop. Part of him wished he had worn a diaper, while the other part of him was mortified of the idea of wearing out in public, especially around pretty ladies. Part of him wished he had worn a diaper, while the other part of him was mortified of the idea of wearing out in public, especially around pretty ladies. Ah, oh, would you look at that? Well... I suppose it was only a matter of time before they appeared on store shelves. Satomi was several steps ahead of him, in front of a medical supply store where Wayne bought his diapers. He blushed as he caught up to her and found her staring at packages of adult diapers stacked up in the display window. He had never seen these brands in person before, but they had gotten rave reviews on both diaper fetish sites and medical incontinence forums. They were the first biodegradable, eco-friendly, go-green disposable diapers. Online, they sold like hotcakes and came in a variety of sizes. The company had started off as a baby diaper company, then expanded into adult incontinence products, then eventually started producing baby print adult diapers due to numerous customer requests. The only drawbacks to them were the bulk and the noise. I, I can't believe they have these here, Wayne blurted out, then went beat red in embarrassment and wished the earth would just open up and swallow him up. He coughed, spluttering, and cleared his throat noisily. Uh, my, my friend buys those for his kid. Uh, well... Um, in baby sizes. Satomi shot him a quick look, as if she didn't believe him. Hmm, my nephew wears those. Great absorbency and containment, especially for extended wear. I'll have to remember I can get them here, and not just online. The mental image of Satomi in a low-cut, tight white nurse's dress with white stilettos and her slim, elegant hands reaching for the tapes on his diaper popped into his head and he felt his pants tighten. He coughed loudly some more, grateful for a long coat. So, um, how old is your nephew? Eighteen. Oh. If Satomi kept her nephew in such thick diapers, especially for extended time, Wayne concluded the boy must wear them not just for night. Absorbency and containment. Maybe the boy needed his diapers for more than just wetting? Wayne suppressed a shudder. He wasn't a fan of messing in his diaper. He had never had the guts to try it. He'd put oatmeal down the back of his diaper and enjoyed the sensation but messing was out of his league. The pretty, effeminate boy in the locket had not looked mentally disabled. 
the boy must have a physical disability. Wayne fiddled with his thumbs, feeling guilty about that flash fantasy of Satomi changing him. He felt guilty for getting off on diapers when there were people out there who needed them. My baby isn't slow. He's just a little damaged emotionally and physically. For once, Satomi seemed at a loss for words, her perfect features scrunched up. She stared up at the diaper display while Wayne stared at her. He's been that way since his eyes first opened in the hospital ICU. I'm sorry. Wayne was shocked at this and didn't know what else to say. He wanted to comfort her, but didn't know how. He sensed any offer or gesture of comfort would be sharply rebuffed and her claws would come out once again. Satomi shook her head, brushing his condolences off, and her voice grew soft. It happened just after New Year's. His mother was murdered, tortured to death by her fuck of the week. A security guard found them, dumped in an old Christmas tree lot. Bodies wrapped in tarp and Christmas lights. My nephew was barely alive. Satomi's gaze was vacant, like that of a glassy-eyed doll. She stared up at the diapers and snowflakes. She held up one of her leather-clad hands, palm up. Snowflakes danced in circles in her palm, going against the wind in an unnatural rhythm. Wayne stared at her flakes. A cold lump nodded and sank in his stomach. He felt lightheaded and sick at the mention of a mother, child, and Christmas lights. His almost full bladder almost let loose at the sudden shock of it. His bladder muscles squeezed tight, just barely preventing a leak. He felt like he'd been doused in cold water and his limbs were going numb. A murdered mother and child wrapped in Christmas lights. It couldn't be. Fate could not be so cruel. What's your last name? He stuttered out through shock-numbed lips. His voice quivered in trepidation. Satomi blinked and turned to him. Thin brows furrowed at his stricken expression. Hmm? You mean my family name? Fujiwara. The cold stone in his stomach sank to the very bottom of his being and dragged his heart down with it. Sweat broke out on his forehead. Mine's Watts. A cold, dark light began to glow in her eyes. You have a brother named Jack? Wayne nodded miserably. You have had a sister named Kana. It was a statement, not a question. Satomi didn't answer. She stared at him her face cold and her eyes blazing. The wind whipped fiercely, stinging the exposed skin on his face and stealing the air from his lungs. Frost suddenly formed and crackled along the window, obscuring the diaper display from view. Fear spiked through Wayne, and he knew with a sixth sense certainty that he was going to die. Satomi was going to kill him with those horrid, beautiful eyes of hers. They held him spellbound in terror, unable to look away. She blinked. As sudden as the weather change started, it stopped. Big, fat, wet snowflakes drifted down serenely once more. 
she spun around, away from him. You're shaking. Come, coffee. Her heels clicked on the salted cement, wet with melted snow. Wayne almost didn't follow her. His gut, the part of him that had been terrified of closet monsters as a child, screamed that he had just narrowly avoided death. He wanted to run back to his car and never see her again. Yet, he couldn't leave this monstrous truth that just revealed itself hanging between them. Wayne's older brother, Jack Watts, had killed Satomi's sister, Kana Fujiwara. If he left now, it would haunt him for the rest of his life. What were the odds of him running into Satomi? Her speed dating was curious enough, and why would she waste her time with a guy like him? Why a woman like her wanted to go for coffee with a guy like him was an enigma in itself. And now this. No, he couldn't walk away. Satomi was a good bit away from him. He had been standing while she had been walking. He ran, belly bouncing. Satomi! Satomi! He called out, huffing and puffing, hands on his knees as she waited for him to catch up. That little gesture puzzled him even more. They walked down half a block in silence when she turned and entered a small plain shop nestled between two big flashy stores. The coffee shop he would have never noticed on his own. He doubted many would if they didn't know about it. The part of the sidewalk in front of the shop was unsalted with snow on it. The little shop had no sign on the worn, faded door. The paint was nearly all peeled off. The windows were so grimy he could barely see through them. He looked down at the snow. Satomi had left no footprints behind her. Wayne blinked, rubbed his eyes, and attributed the visual effect to him still recovering from shock. He needed a drink. Little bells on the door tinkled as he followed her in. The place was more crowded than he expected. The round little tables and chairs looked heavily varnished and hand-carved. Along nearly the entire length of one wall blazed a real fire in a fireplace with a hand-carved and lacquered mantle decorated with the carved heads of snarling, fantastical, mythical beasts from a menagerie of ancient cultures. The fire crackled, spreading warmth and the smell of burning, fragrant wood throughout the room. Satomi-sama! Lady Satomi! Many of the patrons called out to Satomi, and to each she responded with a regal dip of her head. A few times she paused to murmur greetings in tongues he didn't understand. She even bowed deeply to a few. None of them seemed to take notice of him as he carefully squeezed his bulk past the maze of close-set chairs and tables, following into Tomi's wake as she glided like a swan on a smooth lake. At the counter in front of the back wall, Satomi's fur dropped down to her elbows, exposing her slim shoulders and impressive cleavage to the barista. Wayne watched the elegant, smooth slide of bones under her satin skin. I'll have Irish coffee and extra cream and whiskey. And she called over her shoulder without looking. Little man, what are you having? The denizens noticed him for the first time, and they all stared at him, openly wondering what Satomi was doing with someone like him. Uh, just regular coffee with cream and sugar, please. Satomi either ignored him or didn't hear him. And a baby chino with chocolate syrup and cream. 
The barista snorted as if she found the new idea of the baby chino, which was a drink of frothed milk, sometimes flavored with a shot of syrup. Mothers bought their little ones when they went to coffee shops. Utterly ridiculous. Wayne blushed and felt somewhat childish that Satomi had ordered for him and ordered him a child's drink. Wayne reached into his pocket for his wallet. Satomi was the one that asked him for coffee, and he knew in this modern age some women preferred to go Dutch or sometimes even pay for the whole thing. But Wayne was old-fashioned in that regard and felt that the man should pay. Without one glance at him, Satomi reached back and smacked the arm that was reaching into his pocket. She shook her head at him and opened her clutch to pay. But the gray-haired lady behind the counter waved Satomi off. Nah, uh not for you. Told you, don't want your money. I still owe you for that fucking startup loan. It's not a loan. It was a gift. You don't owe. The woman whirled suddenly making a racket as she banged things around, making their orders. Eh? Sorry, dearie, can't hear you. She hollered and ignored Satomi, who just rolled her eyes in resigned exasperation, as if this was old hat between the two. Satomi watched the flurry of activity as the woman clanged around. Uh, Sato? Wayne felt increasingly uncomfortable and out of place. Most of the patrons once more ignored him, but a few stared, without blinking. Their gaze was as eerie and deeply penetrating as Satomi's. Satomi shushed him as she would a small child interrupting her. She leaned forward on the counter as the lady brought their drinks over, presenting the barista with a superb view of Satomi's luscious breasts. The barista gave them an appreciative leer as she set their cups down. She bent as she pushed the cups forward, and a snake-like forked tongue darted out of her mouth, tasting the air, then darted out once more to flick across the tip of one creamy breast. Satomi let out a little hiss of air, and the woman shuddered, like she had just popped an ice cube into her mouth. <sighs> so cold, but worth it. Satomi laughed and grabbed their drinks. <laughs> Thanks, Mayu. The woman smiled. Nah, thank you, honey. Wayne sidled up to follow Satomi, shrinking from the speculative gaze the barista fixed on him. She eyed him like she was a toad and he was a particularly juicy fly. Keeping the company of the Lady Satomi. I envy you, and I pity you at the same time. <laughs> she then laughed at the confused look that flashed over Wayne's face. He shoved his shaking hands in his pockets, glad he wasn't carrying his coffee, for he surely would have spilled it. He stepped back and almost stumbled into Satomi. It's like the Twilight Zone, he muttered to himself. Pardon? Satomi led the way to a small table by the window. Wayne couldn't see out the frosted glass at all. As Satomi approached the empty table, one of the men nearby pulled out her chair and she smiled and thanked him. He replied with a nod of his head and clasped the fine boned, manicured hand of Wayne's beefy shoulder. Lucky bastard, the man muttered into Wayne's ear. Wayne was even more confused and just ignored the man. He sat down and glanced at the snarling mythical beast heads carved into the huge fireplace mantle. Those were the creatures nightmares were made of. And he wondered who would choose such decor for a shop. Not to mention, a fireplace like that was an accident and subsequent suing waiting to happen. As for the forked tongue, he shuddered again. He had seen specials on TV about people who practiced extreme body modification. This really didn't seem the kind of place a classy lady like Satomi would frequent. And yet, 
she seemed perfectly at home here and known to the other patrons, as if she was a regular customer. Satomi gingerly sat his cup down in front of him, and at the clack of the porcelain cup hitting the polished wood of the tabletop startled him out of his reverie. He looked up to see her staring at him, and he blushed again. Um, um, uh, thank you for the drink. He shifted, trying to get his big rump comfortable in the small chair. Once again, he wished he had worn a diaper. The thick padding would make the hard chair more comfortable. Satomi gave him a small smile, and his nerves froze as his heart thumped. The sultry expression in her eyes and lips could melt the marrow in a man's bones. Never breaking eye contact with Wayne, she dipped one fingertip into the heavy cream of her drink, then extended her hand behind her to the man who had pulled out her chair. He took her finger into his mouth, sucking the dab of cream off. He took Satomi's slender hand revertly into his own, turned it over, and kissed her knuckles before going back to his own drink and newspaper. Wayne stared, unsure how to react and slightly shocked. Satomi's smile widened like a Cheshire cat, and she stirred her coffee with her licked finger. Did she expect him to lick it next? He reddened and used a small spoon to stir his own child's drink. He stared down at the frothy cream with chocolate sauce. He hid from her gaze as he slowly stirred. She just stared at him in silence, silently sipping her own drink. He could still feel her eyes upon him, and he wondered what she was thinking. This, um, is an unusual place. He didn't want to offend her, but he couldn't stand the silence between them anymore. Mostly, he wanted her to stop looking at him like that, making him feel even more awkward than he was on his own. She seemed perfectly at ease. Hell, she looked like she was enjoying this, relishing the discomfort she caused. Mmm. She let out a little bedroom moan as she sipped her drink careful not to smudge her lipstick on her cup. He couldn't tell if she was agreeing with him or just enjoying her drink. The mental image of those full, peachy pink lips hovering over his diaper-covered crotch popped into his head, prompted by that little moan. Maybe she would kiss his diapered crotch, or... Wayne suddenly coughed and shifted feeling even more awkward and wanting to adjust his pants under his coat. Her eyes and lips smirked at him. You're kind. Don't come in here much. Did she mean fat people? Or humans? He shook his head at that absurd idea. Maybe she meant awkward, nerdy guys. He took a long sip of the frothy, sweetened milk drink and was surprised at how good, if childish, it tasted. He took another, deeper and appreciative sip and felt his body relaxing, despite the strange occurrences of the night. Ah, uh, well, can't say I blame them. Not much room for people my size. Not even any donuts. She laughed at his lame joke, and for once there was nothing cruel, mocking, or teasing in her tone. She was laughing with him, not at him. Wayne found himself smiling too. He took another long drink of his milk as she did her own drink. They put their cups down at the same time, and he blurted out the first thought that popped into his head in his relaxed state. I'm sorry about your sister. 
Her face closed off, and he immediately regretted the words. I'm more sorry about my nephew. Satomi shrugged. I was never surprised at Kana's fate. She'd been falling apart for a long time. It was pathetic. The true shame is that she dragged my nephew into her mess. Satomi fingered her locket. Wayne's grip on his mug tightened, and he stared down at the frothy milk, mug warm against his palms. His mouth worked a few times, loose in shock at her cold words and even colder tone. But, but she's your sister. So? Yes, her end was tragic. I miss her but I'm not going to pretend like she was a good person when she wasn't. I'm not going to say nice things about her just because she's dead. When I'm dead and gone, should people say nice shit about me? I fucking hope not. She sneered. Satomi, the most beautiful creature I've ever seen, but what a fucking bitch she was. <laughs> she laughed and raised her cup in a mock toast. Wayne winced, her words and voice piercing into him like a fatal sword thrust. His stomach twisted, and he felt faintly sick. He peeked up to watch her take a long drink with her eyes closed. When she opened them, the dark emotions swirling in her eyes nailed Wayne to his seat. Satomi so daintily set down her cup porcelain clinking against the saucer. And you? What of your brother? Did you love him? Wayne grimaced, dropping his gaze back down to his own cup. He swirled the milk, but didn't feel like drinking anymore. He took a deep breath, inhaling the scent of steamed milk. Sighed, and met Satomi's gaze. Yes. What he did was beyond horrible. It tore two families apart. My family, we had to move to get away from it. My mom developed depression. I developed a beer belly. How do you forgive or move past something like that? I don't know. I remember growing up with my brother. He was a good kid and a good role model for me, really. Then he started up with the drugs, got kicked out of school, got kicked out of the house. He changed. People just saw him as a monster on death row. I'm sure a part of him was. It's easy to just blame the drugs. It's what he did in his letters to me. But part of him was a monster. Yet, there were other sides of him too. No, not a monster. He was all too human. Perhaps that should be the scariest part. Everyone harbors the capacity for good and evil in them. Given the right triggers and circumstances, anyone could be a killer. Wayne shook his head. Mm, I don't agree. That idea, it's too scary. He shuddered and swirled the milk around in his cup. Some liquid sloshed over to the side and onto the table. He fidgeted. The seat felt too small for his big bottom didn't want to hear any more of what she would say, didn't want to be around her anymore. He looked around for signs for the bathroom, but didn't see any. Satomi coolly watched his head swivel around. He reminded her of a cornered rabbit. People kill people every day. Sometimes you can tell there's something wrong with the murderer. 
other times, it's a complete shock to those who knew them. He met her unblinking, frosty gaze for a heartbeat, then looked back down at his mug, which was sticky with the spilled milk. He licked his lips nervously and fidgeted some more. Satomi plunged on. People amaze me with how willfully blind they can be. Tell me, did your brother's arrest shock you? Wayne closed his eyes. The coldness in her voice and gaze unnerved him. Had she hunted him down to confront him over their siblings? The thought sent shards of ice down his spine and coiled in his stomach. His head throbbed and he felt faint. The murder happened a decade ago. So why did she come to him now? What did she want from him? Yes, I didn't believe until after the trial. After he'd been sentenced to death. The evidence was just too much. The DNA. The fingerprints. Your nephew's testimony. It was all just too much. Yet, I... I didn't want to believe. The man who did those things. That's not the brother I knew. He trailed off, shaking his head. I don't want to talk about this anymore. His hands shook on his cup, the milk sloshing around. Satomi just stared at him. He could feel her eyes on him, as cold as a predator's. She was so damn cold. Not even a hint of mocking warmth to her. He shivered and abruptly stood up more milk splashing onto the polished table. His chair screeched backwards on the wooden floor and hit into the empty one behind him. Why me? Why now? What do you want from me? Satomi's gaze followed his motion, her peachy pink lips smiling like a coiled cobra ready to spring at its prey and inject a deadly venom. <laughs> Finally give up on figuring me out. She raised her cup to him in a victory salute and took a long, slow drink, draining her cup and gingerly setting it down. Wayne watched her, uncomfortable, and just wanting to leave, to go home, diaper up, and forget the beautiful bitch who toyed with him all night. Yet. They were bound by his brother's crime and this meeting tonight, and deep down he knew he would never forget her now that he'd met her. His body was taut with tension, and his bladder twinged. His agitation stressed his full bladder. All the liquids he'd drunk were catching up with him and adding to his discomfort. He really did need to get home or find a bathroom. But right now, he wanted answers, wanted to put an end to this. He gripped the tabletop, knuckles going white. Answer me, damn it. You keep sending me mixed signals. Quit leading me on and tell me what you want with me. His breathing was hard and labored, as if he'd been once more running to catch up with her. Her answering smile vexed him all the more. What do I want? It's very simple. You. Didn't you enjoy your evening in the company of a beautiful woman? One who even bought you a drink for a change. <laughs> she laughed. Why me? Why you indeed? <laughs> Her laughing eyes mocked him. She rested her elbows on the table, interlocked her fingers and rested her chin on them. I've been watching you, Wayne. I didn't know you were the brother of my sister's killer. It was a surprise and coincidence. 
But life is ironic like that. Just like it made someone like me my nephew's guardian. There are things about you I know. Things you've tried to keep hidden. Like the diapers. <coughs> but beg, beg your pardon? Wayne garbled. His vision blurred and he grasped the table in front of him, suddenly feeling dizzy and faint. The air in the room was suddenly too stuffy. He couldn't breathe. She knew. She knew his secret. Satomi licked a little bit of remaining whiskey foam off her dainty china cup and smirked as if she'd cornered a mouse. Yes, I know your secret. Your reaction to the diaper display confirmed it. She had singled him out, had hunted him down, and had found out about him from Martha, who worked in the pharmacy where she bought her nephew's diapers from. Taking care of her nephew had helped her get in touch with a softer side of herself she rarely showed and had thought she didn't have. Him relying on her for everything, especially changing his diapers, had brought nephew and aunt very close. She had found out about Wayne when she had her nephew in the pharmacy picking up his diapers. Some little kid had pointed out to their mommy, rather loudly, about the big boy in diapers. The mother had given a few nasty remarks regarding people with disabilities, and Satomi had whipped around and let the woman have the full brunt of her wrath while Satomi's nephew had shrunk in on himself and pressed against the counter eyes lowered, and struggling not to cry. Martha, the pharmacy clerk, had confronted him and told him plenty of other people, older kids and adults, needed diapers, and it was nothing to be ashamed of. And she was, in fact, holding a diaper order from the internet for another customer. And it was the same kind of diapers he wore. After the woman and child left, as Martha got to Tommy's nephew's diaper order, Satomi had noticed behind Martha a plain box, the same size and shape as the ones her nephew's diapers came in. Same company logo, too. And she'd noticed the name on the order. That moment had sealed Wayne's fate. Wayne made an awkward, dry, gasping squeak. He flapped his beefy hands in distress as he struggled to breathe. He couldn't think. Satomi so knew about his diapers. She knew his deepest, darkest secret. It was why she had approached him, singled him out. Those thoughts swam in his head, clouding his thinking. Once again, she had yanked the carpet out from under him. Satomi's so poisoned honey smile revealed white teeth that were a dentist's wet dream, at least until she bit their fingers off. You heard right. There's a reason I came to you. I have something special for you. A gift. Or possibly a curse. She grinned. You'll either love me or hate me. But give it to you, I will. I've decided. She spoke as if he had no choice. Wayne stared at her dumbly. She wanted to give him something? Something to do with diapers? His jaw dropped, moving for several minutes like a fish out of water. Finally, he found his voice. Uh, how? What? How did I know? <laughs> the same way Santa knows whether little boys and girls have been naughty or nice. She toyed with him again, but his brain was still processing what was going on for him to feel indignant. He slowly shook his head. I, I, 
I need to go to the bathroom. He needed to get away, to clear his head and think about all this. And he did have to pee. Her beautiful features took on a sadistic, triumphant leer. And for a startling, fleeting moment, she looked not human at all. She looked demonic. Fear jolted through him like a lightning bolt, and a squirt of pee escaped into his boxers. <laughs> There's no bathroom here. Her laughter was full of wicked glee, amusement at his distress. Come with me. Thinking she was leading him to a bathroom, he offered no resistance as his head was foggy, still numbed with shock and panic, and his bladder grew more and more insistent. She laid a bare, slim hand on his wrist. Ah, you're so cold, he cried out. Her pale hands felt as if they were made of arctic ice. She ignored him, heading for the door. Its ribbon of bells tinkled as she slammed the door open, hauling him behind her. She was somehow able to move so quickly and effortlessly in her stilettos. Wayne stumbled along behind her, looking down at the snow-covered sidewalk, and once again noticed Satomi left no footprints. He didn't even hear the click-clack of her heels on the frosty cement. The wind whipped fierce around them. He closed his eyes against the icy sting blindly following Satomi. Her excited laughter pealed through the air like the chime of silver bells. Wondering what was so amusing, Wayne cracked one eye open to find them gliding past pedestrians as if he and she were walking on air. He closed his eyes again as the bitter wind made them water. Wayne slammed into a brick wall. Pain pulsed through his body. He moaned, wondering what happened, if they'd run into a wall. The bitter sting of the winter wind was gone, yet it still blew over his head. They must be in an alley, shielding them from winter's touch. He slowly opened his eyes. Satomi stood before him, her eyes wide and electric, boring into him. Snow drifted around them. Satomi's skin was so pale it seemed to blend into the white of snow. Only those horrifying eyes stood out. He cringed and looked away, down at the large stack of cardboard boxes with the logos of various adult diaper companies surrounding him. He dimly realized they were in an alley behind the medical supply shop. Wayne. Satomi purred one icy cold finger lifting his pudgy chin and forcing him to look at her. She stood right in front of him, trapping him against the brick wall. Her body radiated cold, as if it was the essence of winter itself. The whiskey and coffee froth and peach lipstick were gone from her full lips. Pale, ice-kissed blue was left in their wake. Wayne's mouth felt dry, his full bladder forgotten as he stared at those alien lips. What are you, Satomi? She leaned in even closer, lips almost touching his cheek. He cringed into the wall, as far away from her as he could go. She smirked. Yuki, Ona. Snow Maiden. She grabbed his chin, her slim fingers unnaturally strong, and forced his head around. Her touch burned icy hot, and he whimpered as she kissed him. Her lips were soft and oh so cold. Cold pierced through him like an icy knife, stealing his breath and his thoughts. She tasted like creamed whiskey as her tongue plundered his mouth, her long, lean body molding to his plump one. Cold filled him, sucked away his human warmth from the inside, like his insides were getting frostbite. Parts of him started to feel numb, 
while other parts were sharp with icicle daggers of pain. He groaned. Satomi pulled back, eyes twinkling. Warmth flooded Wayne's crotch as soon as she pulled her lips away. He was dazed, punch drunk, and shivered like he'd been outside in the cold winter for hours. <laughs> what, what did, did, did you do, do, do to me? He shivered as the piercing cold receded and she stepped back a little. Satomi grinned. I just took a little of your warmth, as is the nature of my kind. I could have killed you if I wanted to. The yokai court, basically the governing body of my kind, would not hold your death against me. Brother of my sister's murderer. She dipped her head in a mock bow. I just wanted some warmth and some sport with you. It was fun. You may think me cruel, but with you, I was gentle. If you were the usual arrogant cock I go for, I'd have had you crawling on your hands and knees, licking my feet as you shit yourself in your diaper. <laughs> she laughed. Her beautiful, melodious voice was full of unbridled malice. Wayne's heart beat fast in fear. No ounce of desire for her left in him. He pressed further into the wall. Satomi's eyes suddenly lit up. And now, for the gift I have for you. She gave him another mock bow. Snow fell heavier, and the wind gave a sudden strong gust. Wayne blinked and shut his eyes against the swift flurry. When he opened them, Satomi was gone. He sighed, slumping in relief. The warmth in his pants was now cold and wet. Wayne blinked and looked down. His pants were wet. He groaned. His coat hid his crotch, but his bladder had been full, and the wet spots ran all the way down his legs. Damn snow bitch. What the hell? I swear I've got to be dreaming. Her gift of wet pants was more of a prank. The sudden cold must have jolted his full bladder, making him pee on reflex. The winter chill sucked the heat out of his urine-soaked pants, making him shiver some more. Ugh, I gotta get home. It was either stay out here in the cold alley until he dried, or take the walk of shame back to his car and hope no one noticed. He chewed his lower lip, debating his choices. A light flicked on, and a door on the rusted hinges squeaked noisily as it swung open. Wayne? A woman's startled voice drew his attention. Wayne jumped and spun around, looking up at a familiar face. M martha What are you doing here? They both said at the same time. What are you doing here? My sister owns the store. I'm helping her with the inventory. She held up several empty adult diaper boxes. I, I was just waiting to dry. I, I was just waiting to dry. He stuttered the truth out in his surprise, his brain too shocked to come up with a lie on the spot. He blurted out the first thought in his head, which, unfortunately for him, was the truth. Waiting to dry? She echoed, confused then looked at his pants and open coat. Open coat? When did that happen? Mm, Satomi. He stifled a groan and felt his pants grow warm as another spurt of pee escaped without warning. Oh, I see. Understanding dawned on her face. Wayne just groaned and his embarrassed red face in his hands. 
he just wet his pants without warning. Again. Oh, God. What had Satomi done to him? He was still numb with the shock of it, but beyond the numbness, he was starting to realize she had somehow made him incontinent. And now he had pissed his pants in front of a co-worker. Martha was one of the cafeteria ladies he saw every day at lunch, and one he often chatted with as he ordered his food. I- I'm so sorry, he mumbled into his palms. It just... I just, it it happened so fast and... Aw, you poor dear. I was wondering why we had an order with your name on it, but now I see. It's a medical condition. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. So why don't you come on in and clean up in the bathroom while I get your order ready for you? Her voice was gentle and coaxing like a warm cup of coffee. It soothed his frayed nerves enough that he could peek up at her over his fingers. What? She was all warm smiles and understanding. An honest smile. Not one of Satomi's amused, mocking smirks. Well, don't just stand there like a ninny, come on. You've nothing to be ashamed of. I have an autistic knee still in diapers. Martha said matter-of-factly. She had the warmth and authority of a very maternal woman. She tossed her empty boxes to the pile in the alley. Wayne slumped, his reeling mind still working to come to grips with what was going on. He was unable to come up with any excuse to politely get away. At least now he could dry his pants. Further, adding to his shock of wetting his pants and being caught in said wet pants, was being caught by the lunch lady he knew from work, who also worked at the same pharmacy where he ordered his diapers from. Diapers for his fetish, not a medical condition. But he'd be damned if he'd ever tell her that. Wayne, come along. Martha reprimanded as if he were one of her grandchildren or children. She held the door open for him and gestured for him to come on in. Uh, uh, all right. He trudged up the steps after her and paused just before entering. He peeked up at her, his face still bright tomato red. Um, thank you. Martha smiled. You're quite welcome. He realized for the first time that Martha was not really all that bad-looking. Her beauty was a small flicker to the bright blaze that Satomi's was. As Martha led him to the employee restroom in the back of the store, he wondered why he had never noticed her before in a romantic way. Sure, he saw and talked to her on a daily basis, but he had never noticed the red highlights of her hair or the way her ample hips swayed as she walked. She was a bigger woman, but that didn't bother him at all. It's not like he had room to complain with his own girth. He thanked her once again and slipped into the bathroom. I'll just go grab one of your diapers, uh, disposable briefs, from your order. Be right back, Martha called as the bathroom door swung shut. Wayne was ready to fall to pieces as the shock began to wear off. Twice, he had pissed himself twice. He turned the sink on, splashing cold water on his face, and felt a little warm spurt into his wet pants. He groaned and looked down. Satomi really was not human. He was starting to wonder if she was even real, or if he had gotten pissed-ass drunk and hallucinated the whole thing. But whatever the case was, his current bladder problems occupied his attention. The snow and those blue, blue lips. Monster. Not real. Could she have been real? Monsters were real? Maybe. Monsters who stole people's bladder control. He started shaking. No. Can't fall apart now. Gotta get home. Home. Yeah, that sounds good. Just get home 
and go to sleep. He closed his eyes and took several deep breaths until he'd calmed down. He stripped his wet pants off before he could have another accident in them and held them under the hand dryer, starting at the damp, urine-smelling crotch where the damage was the worst. He was getting ready to press the cold metal button when someone knocked on the door. Wayne, here's your di- um, your absorbent brief. Wayne opened the door a crack, making sure to hide his body behind the door so she couldn't see him. Uh, uh, th thank you. He snuck his hand out, unable to look into her eyes. She thought he was incontinent and wore diapers because she just caught him with wet pants. Working at her sister's pharmacy, she would also have seen he ordered diapers, and she had put two and two together. Martha put the diaper into his hand. He could feel the plastic-covered thickness of it. He withdrew his hand and shut the door. His face instantly flamed when he spied the happy clowns and balloons smiling up at him on the diaper's front panel. He'd forgotten he'd ordered those. From the other side of the door, he heard her giggle like a schoolgirl. <laughs> Wayne, those are some interesting briefs. His mouth went dry. He bit his tongue before he could panic. Ah, uh, um, yes, just a little whimsy to lighten an otherwise rather depressing situation. The excuse popped into his head and rolled off his tongue before he could stop it. Being put on the spot with warm understanding, Martha was somehow much easier to talk to despite the embarrassment. Martha's warm voice was much less humiliating than Satomi's cruel eyes and mocking lips. Hmm, I think it's rather cute. That's a great attitude to have. You let nothing hold you back. The admiration in her voice for what she deemed his maturity in accepting his supposed incontinence had his face turning red. Once more, Wayne lost his wits and was tongue-tied. Uh, uh, thanks uh, again, <laughs> he laughed nervously. Well, I'll leave you to finish up. If there's anything you need, just let me know. I'm gonna go back to counting inventory. He slumped against the door when he heard her footsteps fade away. The cheery clowns on the diaper stared up at him with their mocking smiles. He had to put this damn thing on or risk wet pants again. Martha already thought he needed the diapers. She expected him to have one on. Nothing to be nervous about, right? He had always fantasized about wearing a diaper in public, yet now that it was a reality, it had lost its appeal. With shaking hands, he sat the diaper aside, finished drying his pants and underwear, then picked the diaper back up. He just stared down at it, unable to believe what he was about to do what he had to do. He took several deep breaths. He could do this. She said it was cute. A warm glow suffused his body at the memory, and he felt much calmer. With steady hands, he unfolded the thick diaper. He put the back between his butt and the wall to hold it up. Then he brought the front up between his legs. He tucked himself in, pointed down to help prevent leaks, and taped the diaper snug and secure. She thought the clowns were cute. He bit his lip to keep from smiling as he reached for his pants. The diaper was thick nighttime absorbency. He slid his boxers and pants up over the top of his diaper, which helped muffle the noisy crinkle, but did little to hide the diaper's bulk. Luckily, it was winter, and his coat would take care of that. He folded the leather coat over one arm and exited the bathroom after washing his hands. Martha was just outside, finishing up with a store supply of adult diapers. She looked up when she heard the door open. Her gray eyes flickered to his crotch for a split second 
and she smiled at him. He blushed and smiled back nervously. Feeling better? Uh, yes, much. <laughs> Just leave that leaky diaper of yours in the trash. I'll take care of it. Nothing I haven't dealt with before, she said in a motherly tone. Wayne shifted, suddenly feeling guilty for not having a diaper on before. He blinked, startled by the feeling. Um, um, y you see, I, I, I didn't have one on, he mumbled. What? Her eyes widened at his admission, and her thin lips pursed in displeasure at his stupidity. He held his hands up, feeling like a naughty schoolboy getting scolded. Oh, well, you, you see, there was this speed date event at the bar, and I was afraid of the ladies finding out. In hindsight, it was rather stupid of me. Hmm, I won't argue there. He laughed, more out of nervousness than relief, but it was enough to break the tension between them. She laughed too. <laughs> Men. She shook her head. So, did you have any luck before your accident? He sighed and shook his head. Well, I did get to talk with one. Satomi. He packed that one word with a mix of admiration and fear for that monstrous beauty. Martha clucked her tongue to show her distaste at the name as he set aside her clipboard and pen. You know her? Wayne asked in surprise. Hmm. She comes in with her nephew a few times. He's such a sweet little thing, cute as a button. I changed him once. He came in by himself to get some diapers when he'd had a rather loud accident in his pants. Poor Lamb was so embarrassed he started crying. What else could I do but help him? But that aunt of his, it's like Snow White and the Evil Queen. She shook her head. Evil Queen indeed, that sounds just like her. Martha bent and picked up an open box. She stood up and handed it to him. Here's your order and receipt. You had prepaid when you placed the order. The torn open package of the clown diaper smiled at him and he blushed as he took the box. He stared down at the clowns, unable to meet Martha's eyes. Uh, um, thank you. Holding a box of his diapers. Diapers Martha had opened and pulled one out for him made him more conscious of the one currently wrapped around his waist. The bulky padding pressed comfortingly against him, and he shifted, hearing his diaper crinkle. <laughs> no problem, sugar. Wayne took a deep breath and raised his eyes to stare into hers. I really mean it. Thank you. For everything. You're a very warm and compassionate woman. Your husband is a very lucky man. He didn't stutter at all as he voiced what he was feeling inside. Now it was her cheeks that reddened. Uh, <laughs> I'm not married. Wayne's heart beat faster. Hmm, and that just means the lucky man hasn't come along yet. She smiled like a shy schoolgirl. <laughs> That's kind of you to say. But warmth and compassion don't attract many men, she gestured to her body. She had only a small claim to physical beauty. A few might even have called her ugly. I think those are very attractive qualities. Wayne felt lightheaded and wondered what he was doing. Oh. She blushed redder and dropped her eyes. Wayne cursed himself for a fool and fell silent, all his newfound bravado gone with that soft O oh, from her lips. After several minutes, she peeked up at him and smiled shyly. He grabbed the tattered remains of his courage. Um, I, I should get, get going, but um, if you ever have some uh, free time, 
uh, want to go for a cup of coffee. Uh, n- no pressure or anything. Just two co-workers meeting for a cup of joe. And, and we'll just see how things go from there. He blurted it in a rush. He was sure he'd already blown it, so asking surely couldn't hurt. It wasn't the first time he'd been turned down, and surely wouldn't be the last. He held his breath and felt warmth spread around his padded crotch as he wet himself. He shifted, diaper crinkling. Martha chewed her lip and fiddled with her clipboard. Ah, the sound of his diaper in the quiet back room. Her eyes flickered to his crotch. She nodded to herself, as if deciding a man in a clown diaper was not that romantically intimidating. Finally, she looked back up at him. Okay, I think I'd like that. Wayne blinked in surprise and bit his lip to keep from blurting out a shocked, really? He smiled, and her cheeks blazed cherry red. Well, I, I better get going. He shifted, his diaper crinkling audibly some more. He picked up his box of diapers and folded it closed and headed for the door. Yeah, Martha said and looked down at her clipboard. But I look forward to that cup of coffee with you. Wayne's face was bright red as he blurted that out, then dashed out the door, not waiting to see her response. Once in the cold alleyway, His nerves left him filled with shocked disbelief and pleasure. A grin split his face as he carried his diapers out to his car, wetting a few more times and getting a few sideways looks because of the loud crinkling. Snow kept falling, and the wind picked up, seeming to echo with Satomi's laughter.